Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Sunday, May 20th, 2018, and I want to talk to you about the all-iron battery. For this week's update, we will be talking about the carbon additives we've been trying to use to increase performance. But for those of you who are new here, the all-iron battery has been a project for the last year trying to make an electrochemical cell from an iron anode and an iron salt cathode. After many trials and errors, we have centered on iron sulfate as being the prime candidate. Iron 3 sulfate absorbs electrons. Iron metal in the form of steel wool is going to rust, essentially, oxidize, and release electrons. And by putting those two together, we can make a battery. And it gives about half a volt, and it has very, very poor volumetric energy density. So it's much less energy dense than a lithium ion battery. But the components are so inexpensive that I'm hopeful that with enough refinement, this battery could be scaled up to store renewable energy very cheaply and efficiently with inexpensive, safe, earth abundant materials like iron and carbon. Carbon, of course, is the subject of today's video. We have been using a carbon felt electrode and carbon felt electrode works quite well, but we have a collaborator down the hall who makes a proprietary, highly conductive carbon coating and we thought we'd Put that on the surface of our carbon felt and see how much that increases the performance. It's good and bad. Uh, it initially is very hydrophobic. It resists the ability of water to get into that felt and as a consequence it didn't have great performance at first. In fact we couldn't even get it to wet at first but with a bit of work we managed to uh, change the surface enough to get it to, to work but it still changed over the first course of the first couple days. It changed Toward the good though, as you can see in this graph, the first couple days of cycling went badly until it came up to peak performance. Probably the surface is oxidizing this whole time, becoming more and more amenable to the kinds of reactions we want to do. The next 10 cycles actually worked much better and we were getting very good performance. I don't know that this is going to be the material of choice at least in the near term, but it's nice to know that we can use this material in this context because I think ultimately it may have some higher performance capabilities with the right surface treatment. For the time being though, the cheap Chinese graphite felt from Alibaba is still the reigning champion of carbon electrodes. We've tried carbon plates, carbon rods, coating with different uh, additives and the bare carbon felt from Alibaba is still the best. So. That is good to know because it's fairly cheap and fairly easy to get. My undergraduate student, who was graciously provided for from the crowded funding campaign, has been working hard on making these additives and also on making a new prototype cell. So he's got this, oh, well, you can see this acrylic based cell here with the anode and cathode chambers all etched and labeled into the cell. And we're going to be trying that this week, refining that design and filling it with the different chemicals. I think it's at least a more visible and attractive cell, though in the end it may be too expensive for mass production and the pouch cell may come back. If you like that kind of thing, please do tune in every week. We update every single week on the progress in the all iron battery. Thank you very much to Nico for his progress and hard work. Thank you to the crowd funders who made possible his summer fellowship and we will see you next week.